I need to stop cursing. Katie, why, why am I such a vulgarian? I'm a I, vulgarian too. It's okay. And I don't I don't like it. I want to curb it. I mean, I mean, I guess you have kids. Yeah, shit. But what is that? Why am I such a, a cursy pants? Such a dirt, dirt bag. <laughs> okay, let me introduce yeah, you. Sure. For those of you who don't know, this is my first guest. <gasps> I'm joined by the wonderful, hilarious, and amazing oh. Christina Pazitsky. Oh, Christina Pazitsky. Oh, thank yeah. you for having me. Um, Thanks for being here. I just adore you. I adore all your videos. I came to know you through being obsessed with your YouTube page <laughs> and all the topics that you provide uh, clarity on. And you're just, I think you're such a wonderful service to humanity. And oh. I'm so lucky to know you in real life now. I'm I know. such a fan. I'm such a Love fan. You. It's fun. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for coming. And oh my gosh. I'm just excited. We got so many questions. Like okay. Hundreds of questions. Oh my gosh. I know. I only, I picked, I picked seven. Curb your, you know, just kind yeah. of curb it. We're just going to talk. Yeah. <laughs> but it's kind of, the, the questions are great. Okay. And they're very specific to like things that you would know. Okay. Um, it's kind of mixing our two specialties. Awesome. Yeah. Like I comedy, love... mental health. Oh my gosh. I love being it. Being a woman in business, all sorts of stuff. Fantastic. So anyway, but you're doing okay. Deep in the the core stuff. Deep in the core. <laughs> you know, I, it's funny. I, I've been going, I go through waves, right? As mm -hmm. I'm sure everybody yeah. does. Like totally. some days I wake up and I think is what's going on? Is the world ending? And then some days I'm like, it's going to be fun. Let's have some coffee. <laughs> totally. And then I talk to my, <laughs> I talk to my, um, my father-in-law who's an American and he's mm -hmm. in his seventies. So he's lived through the sixties here. Okay. And he's like, this is what 1968 felt like. Oh, really? Kennedy was assassinated. Everything was upside down. Oh. People were protesting the war. Mm -hmm. I mean, could you imagine a president getting assassinated? No. Like, I remember who was at Louis C.K. did a bit where he was like, our president like flew off in a helicopter, like got impeached. <laughs> <laughs> he was talking about like the Watergate scandal. And stuff. Yeah. He's like, can you imagine that? You just watch your, you're like, bye. He just flew off in a helicopter. Yeah. Like, but being assassinated, like, yeah, it feels out of control, which kind of how things it, feel it, it right and that's exactly to to his point and he's you know so i, I talked to him and that makes me feel better because he's well, been there normalizing done yeah what did he say like what was his advice like it's okay it'll get it'll get better yeah that these are these things are cyclical and and, and mm -hmm. i think too because we're the, i live we're living it for the first time we think that this has never happened in human history there's never been a pandemic there's yeah. never been civil chaos like no this is kind of part of the cycles yeah. But it's been so long that we we've never experienced it. Yeah, not in our lifetime. Right. right? And so yeah. So you keep it in perspective and you're like, it can't be this way forever. Like eventually. No. Right? Totally. And we we all just want to get there sooner rather than <laughs> yeah, later. Yeah, we're like, hey, hey, I've yeah. what well then Jesus, now man. we're on fire. So I'm <laughs> yeah. like, fuck man. <laughs> I know. How much more can we take? Yeah, it's like I feel like um one of those like you know like a dog that's like been hit and you're like no no they'll be nice this time and then it like hits you again you're like what the fuck is actually happening yeah and i actually tried to make a list of awful things that happened this year mm -hmm. just in personal and then yeah and i there was a point where i just i couldn't even yeah it's too negative because i was like you're like holy shit I'm like, i blocked out half of this horrible <laughs> stuff that happened like it was so much. Yeah, it is. It's overwhelming. That's why I've been telling my audience and even myself, I'm like, it's OK to have bad days. It's OK to grieve because like everything is different. Like yeah. comedians need energy of an audience, I would assume. Yeah. And even like for even as a creator, a YouTube creator, like I get, look forward to meeting people every year. At, thank God I got playlisted at the very end of February. But then we have VidCon usually is our biggest play, one. playlisted is uh, playlist live is just another like uh, YouTube creator online creator event. Oh, OK. And, and you actually got to physically go to that. Oh, you're so lucky. It was right before everything. You know, Ugh. it was like my last event. I remember my last show, March seventh oh. at the oh, Ice yeah. House. Oh it was yeah, so much fun. Uh, I know, and I miss uh, seeing people. Don't mm -hmm. you miss? That's the thing. The the connection mm. with the people. Yeah. And the energy of meeting other people, and the energy of meeting other creatives, and getting to talk about what you do, and then that excitement that that I don't know. Yeah. It's just yeah. It's 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 complicated. You know, so I've been missing the audience because uh, people are like, "Why don't you do my you know do my drive-in show? Do my show where you perform for." F cameras and i'm like mm -hmm. i would rather blow blow it's my not brains the same. out like i don't want to do it yeah. yeah 
uh, I was thinking about cancel culture and I notice it more now because I'm just I'm exclusively making content online. Yeah. And I post it on my Instagram. I just I'm you know, when you get a new phone and you make your own personalized emoji. Yeah. And I I was just messing around it with the beard. Right. So I posted <laughs> me with a beehive and a beard. Uh-huh. And I was like, oh, this is funny. Like, this is me as like a non-binary. Yeah. I'm, I'm mom binary. <laughs> like, it's just a stupid throw. Also, you're a comedian. Right. And it's my job. And I was, I'm always fascinated by people's response. And of mm-hmm. course there's, you know, invariably, inevitably the SJW that's like, of course you shouldn't, you shouldn't make fun of that, 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 that. It's like, give me a cogent argument. Mm-hmm. I love cogent. Same. Give me a uh-huh. reason. Yep. If you don't have a reason and you just want, if your whole life is, I want to be upset. That's a tough life. Right. And just don't follow also. Like, I don't understand. Yeah. Like, <laughs> if it's upsetting, then don't follow. And that's one thing I do have an issue with. And you guys can agree or disagree. It's fine. But, like, comedy is so specific to people mm. and the human experience. And that's what makes it great. Yeah. And, like, if I – there's plenty of comedians that I'm like, I just – it's not my type of humor. Not your style. Like, fine. Sean like some, I'm like, nah, it's not mine. Fine. But – there are tons that are. And if you don't talk about those things and poke fun at it, how are like a lot of people process that way too. A hundred percent. Well, and also, um, somebody, I understand the argument of, well, somebody's feelings might get hurt. Okay. Isn't that what comedy is about? Right. But then by that, (laughs) that thought, some, sometimes their feelings might not get hurt. Mm -hmm. So it's my job to predict who's going to be offended and who's not. That's our, that is, I'm not omniscient. No. And then what, you put yourself in a box. What do you talk about? Nothing. That's right. Cupcakes so it, and lollipops. So let me know if there's a <laughs> rational argument. If you really, if you can truly, cause I, I'm, I have a philosophy background. Mm-hmm. I believe in reason uh-huh. and cogent. If you, if you have a real thing, a real logical thing, I will go, you know what? That's right. I am totally. not going to make fun of blah, blah, blah. Yeah. Because I can see now. Blah, sure. Blah, blah. You're right. That's, but I, mm, anyway, yeah. I get yeah. All, I'm all fired up. Katie I, get, I get fired up too. Because <laughs> if you, uh, part of it is like, you have to laugh. If yes. you don't like, even some of my viewers will, will like poke fun at their mental illness or something they've been through because they're like, I don't know what else to do with it. And if that helps you, then that helps you. And if, as a comedian, if you want to share about that, I think that there's, there's an audience for that. Cause there's people who you guys let us know, but I think that that I, are you kidding me? My whole family is mentally ill. I don't yeah. have, I have like one normal, normal functional. <laughs> I hate the word normal, but yeah. functioning. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh, I've got alcoholism, borderline personality mm-hmm. disorder. That's just between my two parents. Yeah. We Narcissism. got a comment. We've got a question oh, about that. I lo- I, let's just hey, jump let's in. Let's jump in. I'm Great. Gonna, I forget. I think it's on the second page. I have anxiety disorders, change disorders. I don't know. <laughs> okay, I don't, I'm not going to label myself based on that, on the DSM. But someone said, I would sure. l- love to hear about Christina's experience of having a mother with oh. BPD as I do too. Oh dear. And if she has any tips for healing or detaching. Oh boy. Katie, why don't you tell, yeah. first let's clarify what these things are. Yeah. Right? So borderline yeah. personality disorder is, is uncomfortable for everyone. I always say that it's a very uncomfortable mental illness because those who have it, cause many of my viewers have borderline personality sure. disorder and try it. I call it being an emotional burn victim. Yeah. So you're very sensitive to, to every situation, every expression, every, uh, I don't even know. It's like you can just gesture in the wrong way and hurt someone's feelings who yep. has borderline and it makes it really difficult to live in the world. Oh my God. That just made my whole thing. You know how I'm like, I'm so, I don't want to offend people. I'm so mm-hmm. into this. Well, no wonder I grew up with a BPD mom. You, you walk who on was... eggshells all the time. Yeah. Look who's really projecting their own <laughs> stuff into the world right now, Katie. <laughs> so hilarious. And that did, there is a whole Gosh. bunch. One of my uh, favorite psychiatrists I work with a lot has runs a group for children of borderline i would love to join it oh yeah i'll see if it's still running <laughs> I would it's it's not it. far from here uh, fantastic so, yeah. maybe online yeah zoom oh yeah maybe i would love to He's i'm serious great. it's super it's been helpful i've sent a few patients there um but anyway so borderline the main crux of it is fear of abandonment mm. and so a lot of people are like well, what does that mean well it's like perceived abandonment like um plans change i run late I didn't see your text come through any small slight, again, super sensitive, emotional burn victim. Right. And Mm. it's super painful. And we don't always have ways, uh, like I do a lot of dialectical behavior therapy, which is like what it's catered towards, uh, borderline. Um, and that's kind of like teaching emotion regulation. Mm -hmm. So I feel an intense emotion. What can I do with it? 
How do I process it? What can I do that's healthy and healthful and not damaging? Mm. Um, so anyway, what that does to the person is it's uncomfortable and it can be hard for relationships. And then we kind of sabotage. We're fear, afraid of people leaving us. Then we want to leave first or we force them to leave. You know, I love you. Get out of here. Yes. That's a lot of what I experienced uh-huh. on the other side of that. Yeah. Yeah. The, there's Black a and book, white thinking. Uh, people don't always like this book, but it's like, I hate you. Don't leave me. Mm, I haven't read that one. And it's, it's so, you know, walking on eggshells. Is I read that good one. one. That one's been underlined uh-huh. margins. It can be so helpful because <laughs> you see your pattern. So then for people who are in relationships with people with borderline, uh, walk on eggshells. Um, it's a good book. Aren't, aren't, have a yeah. tough time communicating, knowing how to express what they feel because they're afraid of upsetting. You know, it's, it's very complicated. So it is girl being raised by someone. So first of all, so my parents divorced, uh, my dad's an alcoholic. My mom was borderline mm-hmm. and they're both immigrant from Hungary. So on top of it, there's so like, many, my poor mother, she yeah. was abandoned a lot growing up. Her mm-hmm. mother died. So she had so many abandonment issues. And my father leaves her as well. Once we come to this country. So I think that spiraled her when he's a narcissist. We suspect, yeah. her. <laughs> uh, suspect. Yeah. 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 They For never sure. go see anybody to get diagnosed. No. <laughs> No. But that's Ugh. what a horrible combination. It really was. Your poor mother. My poor mother. And I think it, I think to her credit, she really tried to hold things together like a routine for me. Mm-hmm. So she was really good about like schedules and breakfasts and getting me to school and doing this stuff. And, you know, like she was, she had all my needs met. However, the downside was like, <laughs> you have too many socks in your closet i'm like what she's like, you have too many socks your room is messy go live with your father and oh, she would she'd do this like the dance i love you uh-huh. get the fuck out of here so uh-huh. she would literally drop me off at school and kick me out and then my dad would have to come pick me up and i would go live with him for like a month and then i would try calling her to apologize because as a child, you blame everything's Always. your fault. You yeah. take total ownership. Yeah. yeah. And then she wouldn't answer my calls because she was punishing me. And then we, I would get into the repentance cycle and then I'd be brought oh, back no. in the fold until that would kind of happen. But what was really going on, I found out later in therapy, is that she kind of resented, not kind of, she did. She resented my father being single mm-hmm. and and like partying and going out So she'd out want you to be, right. it was, she was using you as a tool. A hundred percent. To harm him, when, but you're a human being. Right. And she, <laughs> right. So there was that she was very combative. There was a mm-hmm. lot of like, um, always fighting with me. She would always say, Oh my God, this one made me crazy. She said, we are, well, I'd be like, mom, what did I do? Like, uh, like I piss her off. And mm-hmm. then she'd be like, you and I are going to have a showdown. The phrase was, <laughs> <laughs> we are having, so you're sh- having like a brawl. Yeah. Like, right? like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I remember being like a showdown. What I'm, you know, I'm eight years old. I don't even know what this. Yeah. What did I and do? With my mother, like what? Yeah. So there was that side to her. Now the the positives. The part that I loved is like, guess where I got red lips and blonde hair mm-hmm. and like a flair for showbiz. That mm-hmm. was my mom because her she was so charismatic. Yeah. And so likable to outsiders right so like we go to school everyone loved my mom i wish your mom was my mom but then behind closed doors she was very sensitive and, yeah. and very dysregulated yeah so you know i didn't feel like i could trust her come to her with stuff i learned to live on my own like you just raise yourself essentially yeah, yeah. and it is it is hard and, and i feel like that goes for a lot of mental illnesses like i've had lots of viewers and even patients alike whose moms were super depressed and it's like the same thing mm. they'll put it on to be out if they have to do something but then at home they're like non- Yes. You know. Yeah. Well, alcoholism, I think, yes, functions that way, too, where it's a secret that the child and the family keeps. Mm-hmm. But and that makes it more. It's like that oh, elephant that grows and grows. Yeah. Terrifying, because now you have yeah. you know you have to hide that this stuff goes on. Otherwise, mm-hmm. child services intervenes or mm-hmm. like. So, yeah, that's a whole other. That's a whole. Yeah. So, so how do I deal with it? OK, mm-hmm. I'll tell you what I did. I didn't even realize my mom was uh, really this. <laughs> I didn't realize I had issues with my mom until I was really like 32 or 34 okay. and I would get off the phone with her and I would just start shaking and crying. and Because mm-hmm. you'd had the separation. Yeah. So you could sense the difference. A hundred percent. Yeah. Because she wanted to be Grey Gardens with me. Very enmeshed. Mm-hmm. And she would if even you guys say- don't know what Grey Gardens is. <laughs> Explain Grey Gardens. Oh my God. It's, you can look it up. 
Yeah, it's, it's a movie where the yeah. mother and daughter are essentially in this enmeshed, mm -hmm. unhealthy relationship, and the, the mother really controls the daughter's life. And the daughter's like, I could have been an actress. Uh -huh. I could have lived by my own. Like, no, you really couldn't. They're like, no, because you never, there was never any healthy boundaries. No. <laughs> you were like one being. You're one person. So, any hoodles. Um, so, yes, I got, Tom became my boyfriend, who's my husband now. And she was going through a divorce with her current husband. And I think she felt very slighted by me. Like, how mm -hmm. dare you? You, you are, move on. And you are going, yeah, you are the, you dating this loser. She did not like him because he was comedian. He's fucking loser. I was dating a lawyer before oh. and she liked the lawyer. Yeah. And so I got off the phone. I started shaking. And, and uh, Tom was the first person to point out to me, like, hey, you know, that's really not regular like you shouldn't mm -hmm. feel so much anxiety around your mom yeah and then i introduced my mom to him and she was really fired up that day she was like i went to nordstrom and this motherfucker <laughs> didn't serve me because i am a woman da, 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 da. and he was like yo your mom is wild <laughs> <laughs> at least he caught her because the worst is when you already tell them that like some, like something's wrong with my parent and then they meet them and they put on Oh yeah, the they perfect fake it. face, and then you, it's almost like we take your car into the mechanics. So you're like, I true. swear to God, it was making that noise yeah. yesterday. <laughs> exactly. You're like, no, no, no. Listen to this. No shit, something's wrong. Yeah. I promise. I promise. Yeah, she was, and I think because she may have felt free with Tom. Well, maybe because he's such a loser. He's such a fucking loser, right? <laughs> that's true. Oh my God, I didn't she know. She need to put this. on airs for him. Wow, she didn't. That's so true. But thank she God, because then he got to be like yeah i see it yeah and i decided to go i was like something is wrong you know i'm a, i'm a wreck around her mm -hmm. I, and i started to look at different therapy and different therapists mm -hmm. and i met with two or three and that's another thing i feel like telling people is that it's like dating or it's yep. like anything you may not be a good fit 100 percent. it's it's one of the most important relationships aside from like your partner in life oh um, my god that's a number one is who you yes, marry but yes because we'll like talk about that it's, ser it's serious we talk about that on where my mom's at we when did. you were just on yeah. yeah um but i think therapy a lot of people assume that you need to you just is whoever it is like whoever you're paired with you just do, do see them and if you don't like them or if they don't give you good advice or if they're hurtful or anyway people are like what well, they know best they're the do no you know best right like we we have the tools but you know you best and if you're not comfortable it's not a good fit right because the key is like you're you have to trust this person mm -hmm. trust to open up and and feel safe yeah and feel like you can bleh, on yeah, them and totally so it's important. And I went through two or three people before I found the woman who still treats me to this day, mm -hmm. who saved my life and to completely changed how I think and mm -hmm. react to the world and feel. And I, God bless this woman. Uh, so any hoodles, I got into therapy. And then it's a painful process of taking space from your borderline mother. Mm -hmm. That's She's not going to probably like that. They no. get very they upset. They don't like boundaries. Yeah. Or any kind of healthy detachment. Right. Feels feels it's a wound. Again, going back to, you know, being very sensitive. Yes. It hurts them. But we have to take each person's responsible for themselves. A hundred percent. And my mother did not appreciate that, obviously, as well. And so when I went into therapy, she cut off all communication with me and threw mm -hmm. me out of her apartment when I went to visit her. And then, <laughs> so it was like, um, I'm laughing because I, I know it was her illness and not her. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Like, yeah. I think she was more cogent when I was young. Mm -hmm. She was more there. And then as things happened or she became sick and yeah. she got sicker and sicker and became more and more of a shut in towards the end of her life. Mm -hmm. So it was, there was no way to have a relationship because we were not on the same planet. Yeah. But for you, look, person who wrote this mm -hmm. the secret is get some distance between you and mom i don't know how enmeshed you are i don't know how much communication you have with her try to get a little if you're living with her stop <laughs> if you can't get out yes yeah, save out, up and get out and just kind of heal take some space mm -hmm. get to know yourself a lot of children are borderline from my at least i did i didn't even know what colors i liked no because you uh because you can feel so uh, you're so enmeshed with them and you make decisions based on what you think they're going to like and what you think is going to be okay with them. Therefore, you actually don't know how to tap into yourself and know how you feel, what you like and what you don't like, what's okay and not okay for you because there's never been space for that. No, because you, if it angered mother, I mm -hmm. would be excommunicated. Mm -hmm. Quite literally, I'd be thrown out of the house. Yeah. She, 
she, I would say, I love pink. Can I have a pink dress? No, you like purple. Purple is your favorite color. Oh, geez. Yeah. It took me, I'm wearing purple pants today. Mm-hmm. It took me about 10 years of therapy before I could even put purple on. Well, yeah, because it was forced <laughs> upon you. <laughs> and not that you had anything against purple, but it shouldn't be like, yeah. you don't like this, you like you this. You don't like this, you like this. So there's just a lot of getting to know you. You don't even know who you are when you're the child of a borderline. So yeah. Get into therapy. Find someone you trust. Find someone that specializes, I would say, in that, Mm -hmm. right? There are people who do. A lot of therapists who work with borderline patients, like myself included, do treat the children of them as well because you understand it. Mm -hmm. Um, So, yeah, and it's okay to ask ahead of time. You can call before you even make an appointment or spend any money. It's okay to say, like, hey, you know, I think my mom had borderline personality disorder, and I'm hoping that you understand that. Have you ever treated anybody? Because I think it's a specific, borderlines mm-hmm. are very specific to treat from what I understand. Yes, and it's 100%. different. Anyways, get to know yourself. Yeah. I, I also had to spend a lot of time alone because I was so enmeshed with boys. I Oh, of course, because you don't have, what's a healthy relationship look like? We don't know. <laughs> Freaking no idea. Yeah. I literally, I, I rented a house up this stair street in Silver Lake and I lived like Ralph Waldo Emerson just in nature and I didn't watch television for a year and I was like I'm just gonna write I'm just gonna think I'm just gonna figure out who I am I don't even know who I am Mm -hmm. and now I know and now I'm raising my own children and I'm way healthier but it's and it's scary look it's not easy sorry Mm -hmm. I know this is such a this is such a long you're totally fine it's It's long it's it's not easy I ramble every week okay And I always say, I'm like, I got way off topic there. Yeah, sorry. But it is terrifying. I'm not going to lie to you and say that, hey, it's just, just go to a therapist. Yeah. You're going to face all your demons and you're going to cry and you're going to grieve the mother you never Mm -hmm. had. You never had a mom. Sorry. And Mm -hmm. it's going to be suck. Yeah. It's grieving. Most of it is grieving. Totally. And like, I think the thing also that a lot of people don't understand is like, even when we do uh, face our demons and try to find a new way of being and learn who we are, there's still going to be those times when you get super stressed out or something triggers you and you want to act just like you did. Like I was just talking with a girlfriend of mine, um, because she had gone home during quarantine. Like she, she's like 35. And so she went home for a month because she's like, I might as well spend time with family. But, and she was like, I, it it was sick for me to be like, I can't be there that long. And she had a great relationship. It caught us by surprise, but she, you, you, we do that. We go right back into being a teenager. I remember when I was a, like 23, 24, when I'd go home for Christmas, I'd be like, I can't come back. Like I'm acting like an idiot. I'm like a teenager. <laughs> it's, like it's I don't want a minute. Oh, it. oh you're regressing. <laughs> yeah. And so there are times when you will regress, but that doesn't mean you're pro- like, you've lost all your progress. It just means yeah. you're going through a tough time. Regression and also dissociation. I didn't mm-hmm. realize I dissociated. Oh yeah. Until about two years ago. I didn't realize that not everybody goes out of space is out (laughs) like hardcore space out hardcore bro watch like watching yourself yeah Yeah. and not even being in your body for Mm -hmm. a day because something would trigger me up so much in therapy or Mm -hmm. something would remind me of my mother and I would just I was gone Mm -hmm. so I did EMDR yeah good and it it's really helped me that's wonderful even I seldom I haven't dissociated in like a while that's awesome I think yeah. EMDR bros. Check it out. Yeah. Do I've talked, EMDR? I've talked about EMDR and stuff, um, and how helpful it can be for people, but dissociation is very common when it comes to trauma mm-hmm. because it's uncomfortable to be in our bodies. Cause we don't know how to like even identify what's happening. We become overwhelmed. Mm-hmm. And then it, I always call it like, it's our brain pulling the ripcord. It's like, Whoa, whoa, whoa I'm out of here. <laughs> That's so true. I need to take a break. You know? Yeah. Yeah, it happened when we had fires two years ago, and I had a baby, a six-month-old, and my son was like, my other son was three, and I completely was just out of my life. Yeah. Yeah. I was like, oh my God, I have to flee. I had to evacuate our house. Yeah. I was like... Yeah, we had to pack up all our stuff. We were were like ready for evacuation. What a weird experience to go through your home, Mm -hmm. and like, what do you need? Oh, devastating. I don't wish that on anyone. (laughs) I know. It's like... It's a very uh, heavy, scary, yeah, super terrifying. Yeah. Um, so anyway, get help. So yeah, get help. Detach healthfully um, as much as you can. Communicate with your mom for better or for worse. She yep. can react, however, but you can just say like, "Hey, I'm working on myself, and I realized I don't really know who I am." You know, so um, I may not pick up your calls all the time. I may not, you know, 
I know they'll react and they can react however, but sometimes it's just helpful for us to put words to it. So as best as you can try to explain like, Hey, I'm working on myself or I didn't call you back because, you know, I had work that I was doing. It's okay to not be accessible and reachable. Oh, that's another one I learned too, is that I didn't have to read every email she sent me or, mm -hmm. or address every text or every, mm -hmm. you don't have to answer everything all the time. You don't have to be at their beck and call and yeah. constantly on But tap. you feel like you have to because you've been programmed to be mm -hmm. that way. So yeah. you have to undo so many process, so many things that you were taught. Yeah. Yeah. So be yeah. patient with yourself. Be kind yeah. and compassionate. It's hard. Um, but just given a beat knowing that like maybe you don't reply to that text today. You can do it tomorrow. Or not. I know. What I learned too with my mother is that if she didn't get her hooks into me, because sometimes she would just fish for like drama, like uh -huh. just to get a drama. And if I just ignored it, she would just go and do it to someone to else. To someone else. <laughs> so you don't have to be the, the, it's almost like narcissists are the same where yeah. they'll try to get energy from you. And if they don't get the energy from you, they'll just try someone else. They have a bunch of people that are their sources of energy. <laughs> poor people they, it's just, so yeah. true yeah it's so true because they're vampire well yep. the narcissist emotional vampires supply. yeah have you seen oh what we do in the shadows no. that show on fx there's a, it's about vampires it's like the real world of vampires uh -huh. and one of them is an emotional vampire oh it's no so great i mean but it's true like so we funny. all have people like that in our lives and we've all been people like that yes. at some point in time right it's like when you don't actually want help but you just want to like <laughs> shit talk or get them stirred up too because yeah. your misery loves company. Yeah. Like we've all been there. Um, so yeah. So be patient, be compassionate towards yourself and one little thing at a time. Each and day is a new day. Borderlines. Read yeah. about what your mom is like. It's, it helps. It yeah. helped me significantly to just identify what I had experienced growing up because there's no one else to observe it. It was, I was an only child. So I lived oh, on the upside yeah, down. No, no sibling to be like, cause that's the one thing Sean and I always joked. If we accidentally had a child, we'd have another so they can be like, our parents are fucked up. Yeah, they are 100%. like, you need one. Cause at least my brother and I can be like, yeah, mom was crazy today. Right. Yeah. Like even as adults, sometimes my mom will get like overwhelmed with too many things to do and she'll like lose her shit a little bit. She'll be like, you guys just gotta get us up. Out of you know, she like, <laughs> and she's super meek normally. So it's, you're like, and my brother and I were setting the table for Christmas like a couple years ago. And he's like, yeah, mom's on one. I was like, I know. Just put the table, just put the table together and shut the <laughs> fuck up. Like, <laughs> Give her a drink. You need a sibling. You need a bounce. You need a mirroring too. Exactly. And like, yeah. So I think like, I, I, I liken it to the upside down mm -hmm. in the, what's that show? Stranger, uh, Stranger Things. Things. Literally the upside down is how I grew up where it looked right, but it was something's wrong. Something's in darkness. And so it took me many years to get out of there. You had to pull back out. Yeah. Yeah. It's wild. It's weird because it's like the first half of my life. And now I live a completely different life. So yeah. to look back, I'm like, whoa, who was that person? That was oh, wild, yeah. bro. That's why I love, I forget who said the, who the quote comes from, but they're like, uh, I've shed many skins of my past self. Um, I wrote it in my first book, something about mm. it. But I like that idea that like, um, even if I pass somebody on the, on the street that I knew like 20 years ago, they wouldn't even know me anymore. Cause I don't look the same. Like, That's I love that idea. Bizarre. I don't know what that is, but it's like something about like, I don't even know 16 year old Katie anymore. Like I don't have a, t like she was, she had no idea what was going on. <laughs> she thought she did, which was the problem. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> She had a really strong sense of self. Totally. But don't we regenerate our entire cells yeah. every seven years? Mm -hmm. So we're, we literally are different people yeah. every seven years which that seems about right yeah <laughs> yeah seven, that's a long yeah. time right like yeah. seven years definitely totally okay God damn yeah big question you guys that's yeah. a big one to start with holy uh, mackerel i know we sorry got, we just got just... in the deep end on that one. Oh, this is a good one mm -hmm. um it says how healthy is it for people to be quote unquote best friends with their moms <laughs> at different ages for example when they're still minors and growing up or when they're both adults i just love this question i can't even answer that i don't know because i was never tight with mine so yeah you true tell me. true um i think that until you're fully launched mm. being best friends with your mom means your mom is ineffective it means you don't really I, have a parent i agree and I see it a lot, weird, oddly enough, and I'm sorry for any of you who live in this area, but for a year I moved down to Orange County um, to be closer to Sean and then was like, I got to get back to LA. Like, I don't know what I'm doing. It just wasn't a fit for me. Imagine yeah. going from Santa Monica to like Laguna Niguel. I was like, right, it's super mellow there. It's uh... <laughs> <laughs> It was just suburbia and I yeah. live in like metropolis. Yeah. And I was like, why don't people, why aren't they out at night? What's that? Yeah. <laughs> this is crazy. It's too quiet. Yeah. It wasn't for me. 
Um, but I found that a lot of the moms dressed just like their daughter. It was a very oh, strange like bubble of society and not i'm not saying all of orange county is like this i'm just saying when i was down there that was my personal experience and i remember thinking to myself how unhealthy that was oh yeah and my supervisor at the time because i had a that's when i first started my private practice was down there just like a day one day a week and patty my supervisor was like oh yeah i, I make a living out of like helping these children like become uh, un People. like not enmeshed yeah it's back to the enmeshment really yes and i agree whenever i hear a parent because my mother would say this to me that Christina and I, we are best friends. <laughs> and I thought, well, whenever I hear an adult woman say mm -hmm. that or whatever, the, the child and them, I go, well, then you're not doing it right because... Yeah, you're not a parent then. Yeah. You can't be a friend and a parent. No, bro. And it's you, not that you can't no. be a friendly, understanding, compassionate, great parent. Yes. They're not being friend. It, friends are equals, right? Mm -hmm. Intellectually, you can lean yeah. on each other. The parent dynamic is it's, different with a child. It should be parent, child... You know, uh, hopefully you're wise counsel to some extent. Yeah. Uh, they have to respect you right. in, in your rules. And if they lean in your into home. you. Yes. Not I call my versa. mom still at 36 and I'm like, so I don't understand this. Or like when we were going to buy a car, I'm like, what are things I should ask for? We're looking to purchase a home. What are the, th you yeah. know, you, that's what a parent is. She knows because she's been there. Mm -hmm. um, my friends, I'm like, are you fucking serious? You can believe this guy? Well, like we just shoot the shit, right? And right. I'm like, Sean, leaving a mess. Da, 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 da. Like yeah. you just, that's friendship. And you're equals. Yes. Now, however, a lot of people have noticed in adulthood, uh, they forge more of a friendship with their adult parent. Which when, I think is okay. Is that normal? If you're like, because yes. I noticed Tom and his dad. Tom's dad will now tell him, like, you know, I loved a woman with a full bush <laughs> in the 70s. Yes. And Tom's like, oh, my God, Top Dog. Like, you never used to say that stuff. And I now, love his voice. His yes, dad's voice. The best. He's the sweetest guy. Hey, buddy. Yeah, hey, buddy. It's Top Dog. <laughs> but Top Dog will even be like, I like big racks. Uh -huh. Back, you know. And I'm like, I don't know if that affects Tom, because my dad's always been inappropriate with me. Like, he's yes. always told me that kind of stuff. So I'm like... I don't know. Is that, is that okay? I think it is okay because the, the dynamic has shifted. The parent is no longer responsible for the child. Yes. I know once you're a parent, you're always a parent. You're never going to not feel responsible, but I, I'd like to hear from you guys too, is like, I think that once I moved out of my mom's home and maybe like five years had passed, there was a period of time when it was still like, I was like a child, you know, after, Oh, in your twenties, you're yes. still a baby. Forget yes. about it. I think it Even was probably 30s. around late. Uh, honestly, I think it might've been my age, but also I got married because mm -hmm. I got married right before I turned 30. And I think that it was around that time that like my relationship with my mom shifted from her being like, I'm disappointed in you, you know, blah, 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 <laughs> or shit like that. Like parent stuff. You're like, I don't care. Yeah. I mean, you know, so she's like, what could you have done to get an A in that class? I don't understand. <laughs> um, you know, to like, how are you doing? You know, what's, what's happening? Did you guys yeah. find a good apartment? Are you feeling settled? You know, basic, like more equal talk. Um, but still you wouldn't be like, man, Sean's D was on point last night. Never. But there are some moms and daughters that do, I think. Yeah. And that, I don't know. I don't that's like a that. tricky. I don't like that either. I think that there are certain things. And sometimes I'm always, I don't know if you think this too, but as an American, I'm like, are we just so pent up about sex that some things are uncomfortable for me and not for other cultures? But mm. this, these are, aren't blanket statements, but I really think that the dynamic between a parent and a child is never best friends. It just goes from this, like, uh, I don't know, like hierarchy for lack of a better term, um, you know, where you're actually parenting to not a active parenting ah, sure. where you're more friendly, mm -hmm. but they're still your parent. Like I talk yeah. to my mom differently than I talk to my friends, but I do talk to her every day. Yeah. I think for me, I would never want my sons to know everything. Yeah, about. it's really not. Well, they're your children. There's right. certain views you're going to want them to have of you. There's certain things that they shouldn't know about. Yeah, I there agree. There needs to be healthy boundaries still. Every relationship needs healthy boundaries, and this is no different. I agree. And as far as sexuality, I agree that, yes, Americans are a little more puritanical at times about sex. are just weirder. Yeah. Like, we're more weirded we're like, out. Oh, but like, oh, booty. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> full bush. Oh. Yeah, it's so silly. <laughs> it's like, it's just skin. It's just mm -hmm. skin and folds, yeah. and who cares? But, yeah. cause, but I do believe in an openness about one's genitals. Yes. Not showing mine, but, like, 
Um, but the natural curiosity and like answering uh, real questions. Yes, like Julian was playing with himself as he took it, my son, my two year old. And I'm like, oh, you're playing with your penis. And I like to say the word and uh-huh. like, because he was laughing at me and like, look, acknowledge when I'm doing something naughty. And uh-huh. I, I don't want him to feel it's naughty. Or feel weird about it. Yeah. Like, hey, guess what? That's your penis. Mm-hmm. I have a vagina. It's okay. Yeah. It's but, part of the human body. You don't need to be embarrassed about you know it. what's weird? So I'm where my mom's at. I get people who, we used to do mom fails, which was a segment. Yes. Yeah. Uh-huh. And people, so many, so many people were writing in going, my baby found my vibrator and started sucking on it. Or so they, my kids walked in on us doing it. And I'm like, they first, don't know what's happening. Really. Well, but why lock why your door? Yeah, why is it out? Lock your door. <laughs> get Hide a lock. your stuff. Right now, get a lock. Yeah. yeah like put it, even just one of the little like hook. To- yeah. <laughs> freaking lock dudes hide your stuff that yeah. you don't want your it's so easy yeah uh, yeah it is so I easy it. i get yeah 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 fired up man but also just know that i feel like almost every child has walked in on their parents and they, they'll be normal. okay yeah oh, and, they, yeah, they're fine. and be, they're really if it depends on how old they are but usually a they don't remember because they're too young b they don't know what's happening they're just startled because you're startled because <laughs> you're oh. like oh. <laughs> and if they're little they're like they don't know. They don't even understand. That's true. With their two, two is yeah. not going to get four. No. Mm. Even, I mean, we don't form long-term memories till five. Oh. So not that you can't be affected, but it's like stuff like that. Like it's not going to be like a long-term memory that we form. Well, that's good to know. So yeah. Yeah. Something to keep in mind. That is good. You got <laughs> five years to get it together. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. I mean, attachment happens then, but you've already, you've already nailed that. I've done attachment. Come on now. Okay, this um, this is interesting. Mm. This is kind of up your alley too. Okay. And then the next question is like, okay, so opinions on not wanting a previously absent, neglectful, and sometimes abusive parent ever in your life again. <laughs> is it okay to not accept the love and presence that they are now offering? I want her to stay away because it's too late. And frankly, I don't need it. People seem to be struggling with the guilt and all, but I personally don't think I... and don't feel bad at all. I just, I think I've just resented her too much. And we had a lot of follow-ups about the, like, uh, when's it too late? What's too late mean? So we'll get into that later. But, um, you, did you cut ties completely with your mom or your dad? Yes. Uh, my mother, because she, she cut ties with me. Um, and never came back around. No. Oh, oh well, it, I know it got hard for her at the end. You said she was really isolated. She was and- very, she was a shut in and, and I believe <laughs> had turned, of schizophrenic and psychotic she mm-hmm. was like writing weird things yeah she she'd lost her mind essentially yeah. some people can have psychosis as a part of different mental illnesses if it goes untreated for too long not yeah. everybody but um i have event patients who if they stay in their depressive episodes really long time and don't get treatment they'll have to start having kind of psychotic thoughts mm-hmm. doesn't mean we're like completely losing our minds or crazy it just means we need treatment yeah she she was far gone she was highlighting yeah. um instructions for the microwave and oh. yeah she was circling things she like was making listening connections of things that, that don't. don't exist yeah. and stuff so yeah psychosis sorry what was the question now so oh, we, so, so they we, were saying like uh, opinions on not wanting to have uh, like have someone an abusive parent well, ever yeah. in your life again why, why would you mm-hmm. i i mean <laughs> i think people like, I wouldn't let strangers treat me the way my parents have in some moments. Right. Think about that. It's, it's like, <laughs> let that sink in. Because it, it is there. I've said this on other podcasts before, but we don't owe our parents anything. That's 100 percent right. And a lot of uh, toxic parents will try to convince you otherwise thinking that because they fed you and clothed you and did things that fucking parents are supposed to do that all and they decided to bring you into this world they made a conscious decision that then we have to pay penance for that yeah like i don't know if this it's you don't owe. i don't know how many times people need to hear it but you don't owe your parents anything when we have the opportunity to decide whether or not we want them in our lives then you get to choose, like I choose to keep my mom in my life because she's been super supportive and loving and wonderful. And sure, we fight sometimes because we're people and we have a relationship that we work on, but I choose because we have, she has mutual respect, there's understanding, there's a relationship that's been built by both parties. That's And that's a really important distinction you're making mm-hmm. is that your mother takes res- responsibility for her side of your relationship yes. with her. Now, uh-huh. I would ask this person, how willing is that parent to try to change have they changed have it sounds they like they're trying to because it says is it okay to not accept the love and presence that they're now offering you still get to choose yeah 
It's always a choice. And it sounds like you use the word resentment. So Mm -hmm. then is is part of this problem you processing resentment? Mm -hmm. And then when you're done processing, see how you feel. Maybe you want that relationship. Maybe you don't. And I think, and that's the truth. I like that. Maybe you do, maybe you don't. And I think we can change as things go. Yeah. So like as we're working on our own in our own therapy, trying to figure out and process all the shit they put us through. (laughs) (laughs) That's really it, right? Like Yeah, it's kind of like, do I want to do this more like, yeah do I want to pile more shit onto my pile that I'm trying to sort through but if they change because I do I mean I make a whole living on the belief people can change so and I believe I, they can too yes I whole if if there's a will if there's a want but again I've said this in a video a while ago forgiveness does not have to equate to reconciliation mm, say that again I know forgiveness does not equal reconciliation I can forgive but that doesn't mean I, I have to let you back in And I think that's a powerful distinction because in this situation, just because they're offering things, you can say like, I forgive you from the past. You can process. It sounds like there's some process that needs to happen because you resent, you resent her still, Mm -hmm. which is fully warranted and okay. And it might take years to get through that resentment and grief. (laughs) Exactly. But at that point, then it's like, then you get to decide where you want that to go. And that place could just be, I want to be able to forgive her because forgiveness actually lets us off the hook. People Mm -hmm. always think, oh, it lets the other person off the hook. No, we're just saying, you know what? I don't want to have to deal with this shit anymore. I'm letting it go. I have such a hard time understanding forgiveness. Mm -hmm. It's really complicated. I don't understand it. Explain it. Explain it when you have a shit bird parent. (laughs) Forgiveness, I think we have to start talking about it differently because forgiveness doesn't mean what you did was okay. Be, uh, but I, okay, let's start. Take one step back. Mm-hmm. When I hear forgiveness, I grew up in the Catholic school tradition, mm-hmm. and I equate it with like some kind of a religious. Like I forgive you for doing that thing you did, mm-hmm. but I'm not going to forget it. I, it's it's yeah, very forgive and forget and all that. It's mm-hmm. co- I don't know. Tell so tell it's me. Complicated. I don't get it. I think we equate forgiveness with reconciliation or with um, like condoning behavior Mm. when forgiveness really means, you know what? I don't have the like ability to keep thinking and talking about this. (laughs) I'm I'm going to let it go. You've exhausted me so much that I'm going to let it go. I'm just going to let this one go. Yeah. But it doesn't mean what you did was okay. Mm. And it doesn't mean that I want you in my life. It just means I can't deal with it anymore. Yeah. Like I don't have the capacity and it's, it sounds, it's hard to keep, to hold that because we equate forgiveness with reconciliation. We equate forgiveness with like, it's okay that you did that. I forgive you. Like, uh, do 10 Hail Marys and you're good kind of thing. Right. Right. And that's not the same thing. No. And I, cause what, in order for that to happen, they have to repent the, and then we have to gonna, accept. That's do you know what, what I mean? Saying. There's a process that comes with uh, full repentance that's slash huge. acceptance and then forgiveness. Yes. That's a different thing than just me deciding to forgive you regardless of what you do. Because the repentance, ne- <laughs> that's why well, <laughs> toxic parents seldom get to repenting. Yes. That part doesn't happen. And no. I, you know what really bothers me a lot in the movies and in TV shows is like the, someone will have just a shit bird parent mm-hmm. and then by the end the movie the parent has apologized yeah. and repented and now everything's good it's like did that really happen like sometimes if people can change mm. but they have that's not something that we have to plan on count on or give let them back in because of do you know uh, what i mean i do i 100 percent do and it's hard it's because things are so complicated again like forgiveness is a complicated word parents and family is a complicated word i know because we think that that equates to other things so just pay attention to what assumptions you're making about certain words and certain situations that's a really good point because forgiveness doesn't isn't repentance no and it isn't reconciliation no forgiveness is i can't hate you anymore because it's too much it's too much it's too heavy of a way it's too big of a burden i'm gonna let it go yeah doesn't mean that i'm gonna let it happen again well, that's, that's the other side. So a lot of children that grew up with alcoholic or borderline parents don't understand boundaries. Mm, no. And you, you give them an that. inch and they want to take a foot. Right. Mm. Yeah. And so that's kind of like the, mm. um, the other questions were like, what do you do if they don't stop calling? <laughs> and when- yeah. <laughs> yeah. Or like, te- uh, like texting you what mm. a piece of shit you are. Emailing you laundry lists of things you've done or how horrible of a fucking human you are. I can't tell you the toxic shit that I've seen from my seen? patients. Yeah. Look at my email. I, I you want to look at my account should i have some stuff on deck i can show you from my i mean 
Well, here's what helps me with forgiveness and my parents, at mm-hmm. least with my mother now that she's passed and like, I'm a mom now and mm-hmm. I really see how, how well she did considering all the stuff yeah. she was dealing with. Yeah, your dad being an immigrant, having borderline personality disorder, like all the... And not like people went to therapy in the 80s. No. And also, I'm pretty sure hung, like Hungarians aren't. Oh, <laughs> hilarious. Yeah. Culturally. Yeah. Because there's. It's frowned upon. Uh-huh. You would you fucking pussy. Like it's yeah. so you're considered. It's it's a culture that frowns on smiling. Like in oh, my yeah. parents would go to a restaurant. It's like Germany kind of. Yeah. Yeah. Now, I know I have lots of Germans out there, but I remember going, <laughs> going to Germany and, and telling Sean, is everybody just unhappy? He's like, oh no, this is just Germans. It's they just stoic. don't smile. Cause I'd be like, good Donkeys, morning. Yeah. Like moin. Yeah. And they'd be like, yeah. you know, who yeah. are you? And I'd be like American. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why I love, I love Americans. But if you go to Hungary and you smile at someone, they think like, they think you're, well, they think we're donkeys. Oh, like, because yeah. They just think it's a sign of stupidity. Like, what is this? What are you smiling it's about? It's like they're Dwight from The Office. He's yeah, like, yeah. he always says, like, showing your teeth is like a sign of weakness. Or yeah. Something. yeah. But I think, uh, um, but understanding where my parents came from and the context of why they act the way they do mm-hmm. really helps me forgive. Mm-hmm. Helps me go like, yeah, but they didn't have a chance. Like, yeah. Who yeah. raised this them? This was the way that their the cards were stacked against them. Hugely. Mm-hmm. But you can break the cycle. And I am, man. And it, 10 yes. years of therapy, yeah. breaking it, whoop, breaking whoop. it. <laughs> but that's, and that's like the, the forgiveness part that like, I'm not going to let myself continue to be attached to this. I'm not going to act out of this anymore. And so you already kind of have forgiven, even though there's no, uh, they had, there was no repentance and there was no acceptance of the repentance. Do you know right. what I mean? Yes. Like if yes. we think of it in that way, then I, th- then I think it's a little easier. So I would just, um. Yeah, I think that's kind of important to... Well, mm-hmm. what you just said is everything. Because if you haven't acknowledged that you, you're you grieving a relationship you never had, and da, 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 you're going to continue to act in reaction to your yes. upbringing. Yes. So you're actually not healed yet because you're just like, well, my mom likes purple. Oh, I'm going to like red or I'm going to like mm-hmm. green and I'm going to show her. Then and you're I'm, like acting out of it still. You're still in it. Yep. So to get free of that cycle of react mm-hmm. of reacting, I'm going to do a, a complete opposite. Yeah. And, and I think to, that's the oh, resent. I think that's what this person is still experiencing, which is fine. Like I said, like, I, you know, it's of course it's a site. It's a process. It is. Man. It's such a process. And then someone had asked, um, like, what do you do if they don't start, don't stop calling? Oh, ignore it. You just ignore. <laughs> um, and you I can. know that, that and you can, I know you have free will exercise that right because they're not being considerate of you think about it would Mm -hmm. you call somebody 20 times or send them a shitty email or shitty text and expect a response Mm -mm. they you know it's inappropriate so don't merit it don't give it anything it's like uh like we talk about online like i don't pet the trolls if people want to shit talk me i just ignore them or block them or mute them or all of the above what kind of maniac leaves a negative comment on a free video i know it's free you don't like it? Click off. Watch something else. Yeah. To take the time to leave shitty comments. Yeah. Oh, it's banana. It's bananas. So, and think of the same. It's like they're putting all this energy into sending you toxic shit. We don't <laughs> have to, you know. We don't you don't ha- have to be like, thank you. May I have yeah, more? Give me, please, sir. Give me some more. <laughs> <laughs> mm, I'd like another helping I loved of bullshit. it so much before. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then someone Jeez. says, like, when is it too late? How do we define too late? Um, because this person says, what if I want my parents around, but not too much in a parent way, because that freaks me out because they hurt no. them over and over. So like, oh. if they're capable. Yeah. If they, if they repent, if they ask, if they ask for your forgiveness, if they change their behavior and you're willing to accept them in, in a way that feels good for you, more power to you, man. Great. There are some parents, I read this in a book. Some parents can only do chit chat. Some parents, yes. you can only like call and talk about the game, mm-hmm. the weather, the weather, and uh-huh. that's that's intimacy for them. And I think that's okay. I Sometimes, so something that I um, I think we all have to do. I've talked about this multiple times. Like in with our parents, as we get older, we realize that our parents aren't all knowing. Yeah, and they have their own shit. Yeah, and then we should try to make a list of the things that we would want from a parent in an ideal world in a lifetime movie like best thing ever and then what we know they're able to give us lifetime movies really sweet it's it's like can you watch those really no no and the hallmark ones are i mean sometimes maybe around christmas just because i want to get the warm fuzzies yeah 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 
but not too much (laughs) in moderation. Oh my God. But then write the list of like what they're able to give and then allow yourself to grieve the difference. That is such a great idea. So write, write who they are, who you want them to Uh be and grieve the, what you want them to be list. Yeah. The things that aren't on the other list. Yeah. And everyone's we're, we're all human and we're only capable of so much. Yeah. And unfortunately our parents aren't perfect and they're not capable always of giving us what we need, the full list. Yeah. So, yeah. And Hey man, I think you're blessed if you can get half the list. 100%. Jeez. Yeah. What's normal. How much of the list can you get? I even think half is pretty normal. Three quarters is like fucking amazing. (laughs) you think about you know because like think of your like wish list of uh even a spouse right like what you dream of a dream yeah oh and then and then like what ends up working for you and being the healthy relationship yeah it's not a bad thing for it not to be the dream list it's just life it's like no but this i thought i wanted this i thought this would be better but actually this is is good yeah yeah you know, can't always get what you want, but sometimes sometimes you don't need what you, you get want. what you need. You do. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> can't always get yeah. what you want. There you go. It's true. He wrote it because it's true, it, man. It is so true because, yeah, sometimes what we want isn't what we need. It's not. And you're usually misguided in what what you what you think you want. It's and really it's not born that. out of unhealthy assumptions, yeah. expectations, yeah. society. <laughs> yeah, man, that's right? all other t- that's a podcast. that's this whole podcast in and of itself. <laughs> Talk about that shit. <laughs> okay. Oh my god. This one I think is good, and it's it's something that I'm interested to hear your take yeah, on. Sure. I'd be curious to hear both Katie's clinical perspective and Christina's comedian perspective mm. for this question. Why do so many comedians and artists have mental health issues? <laughs> and which came first, the mental health abnormality <laughs> or the art, or is it a matter of personality? Inquiring minds would love to know any thoughts or insight. Oh my god. You go first. I think, um, this is just my, I'm, I'm making a lot of assumptions here. My, I think that the mental illness came first yeah, because the art is the way to process it. Because I can't tell you how many of my patients, like if we talk about artists as a whole, how many of my patients love to create music, Mm. sculpt, uh, dance, uh, and then comedians, I don't think are any different. Like you've said, that's how you process what you're thinking. Yeah. So that, that would be my thought. So I think the mental health issues come first and then the art. Katie, I'm going to agree with you on your assessment. <laughs> um, yeah, it's because also, at least in comedy, it takes a lot of tragedy, right? Mm-hmm. You have to have kind of the, the tragedy and then the brain that can process that and make it something good. Yes. So it's funny because I, I miss the comedy store so much because mm-hmm. it's all my wacky friends. It's all the crazies. And it's we're such a fun place. God the damn energy. it. I was I so glad we, Sean and I went that one time like, before. I'm like, we should have gone back like right away <laughs> every Aww. night, you know, or like <laughs> one day, one I day, know. it'll come back. It will. It will. But I love to think about all my friends. And now I used to be like, God, I'm not part. I'm not messed up like they are. And I'm like, of course I am. We're all messed up. And I love it. And I love that I can go, dude, what's up with so-and-so? What's their thing? Mm-hmm. Well, that person grew up this way. So that <laughs> I'm guessing so-and-so's got this disorder and that one. And mm-hmm. now that like. I'm open about it. Everyone's open. Mm-hmm. It's it's so great that you find your your wacky tribe. Now that being said, oh, that being said, um, how many people with mental illness are accountants, nurses? Oh, oh yeah, it doesn't CEOs, discriminate. Bus drivers, postal workers, baristas, yeah, therapists, therapists. <laughs> We're the worst. <laughs> Well, you have to be wacky to... Yeah, just to be alive, you have to be wacky a little bit. Well, let's talk about that. What percentage of the population do you think has mental health issues? A lot. So um, what is it? I forget the statistic. I'm, you guys check, like Google check me. Um, but it's one in four are affected. Okay, one in four. So you so have means, a mom mm-hmm. or an uncle or da-da-da. And that means, and like anxiety is our largest mental illness in anxiety the world. Anxiety and depression, yeah. I'm going to guess. And it's like 40 million people or something with anxiety. Again, I haven't checked yet. It's like I'm pulling that deep from my brain. But I'm talking like DSM. Like diagnosable. Uh, like Yeah. I mean, I think debilitated by a mental illness. I probably, I'd say a good 30, 40% of the population. Like if it's you look at the the data and I'm, for, it's, I did this for the first book. So it's been like years ago that I read about it. But the amount of uh, income they feel is lost every year due to mental illness in the U.S. alone is like a staggering number. Meaning people that just can't we all know right it gets really hard to function so we're not able to go into work like we have to call in sick and Mm. and we go on disability um 
the amount of, of money income that's lost due to mental illness is like staggering. I believe it's it. in the billions and I forget exactly how many billions. Well, I read every mig- year. migraine, migraine, people call in with migraine. And mm-hmm. what I used to get those before I got into therapy mm-hmm. uh, correlation. Right. Oh, 100% physical health, <laughs> mental health. It's all part of the same body. Yeah. I don't know why we pretend that one is so different than the other. Well, isn't there the thing like the body never forget the body yep. holds the, mm-hmm. it holds trauma. the trauma. Yeah. There's that book, The Body Keeps the Score. The Body Keeps the Score. You'd love that book. Have you I've read, it? read it? Okay. I was like, I'm so good. Hello, EMDR. <laughs> uh-huh. It's so interesting. It's He's great. so great. Um, but yeah, your body do- never forgets. There's actually cellular memory. That's why even, um, I forget who it was that was doing a research study on like body memories mm. and people who like, let's say had been like choked as part mm. of their trauma, like fingerprints will show up on their neck when they talk about it. Like your body doesn't forget. Isn't that crazy? But it makes sense. And I it know totally does. this analogy is probably very inappropriate and improper, <laughs> but I don't know if you've ever rescued a shelter dog. You ever rescued yes. an animal? Yep. No matter how much you train them. No, they're still traumatized. And yes. they still act some, like even Corny was their dog's name that we oh, rescued. Like he was, and we got him when he was a pretty little puppy, but even as an, he was still very jumpy, always very jumpy. And he was a pit bull, like a hundred pounds. He's a big ass dog, but he did not feel that way ever. He was, he was a afraid of cat or afraid of mm-hmm. dog. Afraid of dog. <laughs> How dare you miss species? I know. My oh. Animals. But yeah, but uh, we had a dog thief that we rescued and, and, there was something, I had two dogs, one that I got as a, an eight week old and mm-hmm. FIFO, who I rescued uh-huh. as a four year old. I would put a treat down. FIFO would gobble that treat up. He, no, he'd take it. He'd hoard it somewhere, yes. hide it, make sure da, 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 it's gone. Uh-huh. The other dog would look at the treat and I'm not into it now. Leave the treat, come back to it later. Mm-hmm. Wow. There's no uh, sense of urgency because wow. I know I'll get it again. Think of, you know, children, right? Wow. Right. Um, a lot of my patients who've been abused as children or, and like neglected become binge eaters. Oh, for sure. Because I don't know when I'm going to go without. And then food's comfort, right? It means love. It means someone's sure. taking care of. It's so complicated, stuff like that. But yeah, trauma. That's why I'm almost finished with my book, All About Trauma. You're What a timely thing. And I think people are really going to appreciate this. I hope it's not now. a turd. Writing's such a weird process. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've you kind of know in your own way, writing. You write comedy is a little different because yeah. I can try it, and if it sucks, I can I, I edit as I go. Yeah, see, this is like you working. gotta. I mean, your editor edits it, and I read it, and I'm like, I think it's good. Oh, it's gotta be. Maybe I'll send it to you. Make great. sure it's not a piece of shit. I, I, I'm, please, I'm sure it's not a piece of shit. I love your uh, first book. Really, I have it on my nightstand. So it's fantastic. I had it for a long time. Oh, I'm glad. I'm I'm glad do it was helpful. I moved. Yeah. But anyway, but yeah, so trauma is interesting that way. Yeah. I think it's just your wires, you know, mm-hmm. you're, you, when I watch my two little ones now, I'm like, Oh, there's all the wiring. It's, mm-hmm. did you grow up in a home where people were relaxed mm-hmm. where you were accepted? Did you grow up in a home where you heard screaming all the time? Ca- yeah. You're cowering, you were hiding. Did you worry about whether or not there was enough to go around? Yeah. That's formative. 100%. Yeah. Um, I read, do you read the glass castle? I think it's called. No, what's that? Oh, I wonder if I have it. I think I probably gave it away. It was someone's memoir. All right. It was this there. woman. Um, and I'll double check that that, I think that is the name of it, but, oh, it's like her parents, she had a very messed up childhood of like neglect mm-hmm. and not feeding them. And they would like go, uh, her and her siblings, um, you know, definitely she's been in therapy to deal with the trauma, but talk about not getting enough and getting the power turned off on them and no water and all sorts of stuff like that. Cause her dad was like a gambler oh. and an alcoholic. Oh. And anyway, it's, it's a, it's a very dark story, but it's also a very powerful, like, I don't know, something about it was so healing to me i was like it's probably was helpful for her to write this out yes and to get it out and also she's like she's doing fine i think it's a hopeful like i'm so good i can write about this yeah and share it with other people so they can get better art is the expression of all that stuff it's Mm -hmm. funny i someone once said to me you know the big correlation between comedians is a lot of us grew up poor Mm -hmm. a lot of them grew up with money issues Mm -hmm. ralphie may used to talk about growing up and severely destitute conditions um, who was it? Richard Pryor grew up, he worked in a brothel when oh, he geez. was, his really? mother oh, or yes, his I remember. grandmother was a madam or something. Uh huh. I mean, yeah. So it's all in the wires in the beginning. Yeah. No, it really is. You see the world and it's hard to undo those. Yeah. It takes a lot of, uh, 
thought awareness. Yeah. And like, uh, just like a strong will. Like you have to be, you have to push back. Resilience. Uh huh. That resilience, man. Tells me. <laughs> That's the chapter I just finished with oh, building oh, resilience. How do you build that in the child? Tell there's me a, so I can. Well, there's a lot of ways. I think mere, uh, showing behavior of you doing things to help yourself yeah. is the real key. That gives those children a leg up on the others' children whose parents did not process well. Meaning, so give me like, like uh, if you're upset and you're having a bad day, it's okay to tell like Ellis or Julian, like, hey, I had a bad day, so I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a walk. Do you want to go for a walk with me? Mm. or um just give you know give mom 10 minutes i got a journal a little bit i had a tough time today or i'm feeling tired or it's okay to express like i'm sad like, or i'm mom's mad gonna or... have a glass of wine she is across... <laughs> no no <laughs> you mom's can do that but do not ex- <laughs> but don't yeah. express that no 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 yeah okay yeah okay so just mirroring um proper behaviors and just eating sleeping drinking water showering like taking care of your baby you know Oh yeah. And talking to them about it, which sounds simple, but not all parents do that and mirror that or not mirror, but like show that kind of behavior. Man, I got to, I think I brought this up on my show, but I was watching the very first episode of Sesame street from 1969. Yes. And what was brilliant, brilliant is that they showed a four or five year old child. I'm brushing my teeth and Mm -hmm. they just showed it every, a live action kid. Mm -hmm. And my sons were riveted at watching another child Uh brush their teeth. Because they're doing something they're learning to do. Yeah. And I thought, oh, the simplicity. And and they're riveted, not so much by Elmo and the stuff they show today, but of a real Mm -hmm. kid doing the thing. Yeah. That they're going, that they're dealing with. And I think that's why, I think that's the magic of parents demonstrating behavior and also having siblings. Yeah. Because, I mean, I had an older brother and for better, for worse, I learned things earlier than most of my <laughs> my friend because he was almost four years older oh so he'd be like santa claus isn't real oh my and God. you know and my mom would be like nicholas <laughs> you know he just get this shit kick no. so she's like so angry but um but you do need someone to like help teach you help show you yeah. um and i think more of that television needs to exist like I think just, so too. just showing children how to do certain things demonstrating healthy behaviors all that stuff yeah because it is the puppets are cool don't get me wrong but it's like What's more riveting than seeing somebody like you? Doing, I know. Doing, and especially as a child, it's so special to it see is. another child acting normal. Yes. I think now like Nickelodeon version of children is like, hey, oh, that's so raven. Or, I don't even know. I don't, I don't know either. But I'm, I'm like, like, I don't know. The Jonas Brothers? I, is, Carly, that, is that still I don't a thing? <laughs> like those kids are acting, I'm saying. Like, yes. I, I mean, you just, just need children. Yeah. Like I used to love um, everybody. Sean and I talked about this on our podcast, but how everybody had their morning uh, children's person. Oh, I had yeah. Ramblin' Rod oh, in the yeah. Pacific Northwest, man, Ramblin' Rod. And the kids would be on with Ramblin' Rod and they'd be like, one of you gets to introduce the next show. And he'd be like, <gasps> me, me, me. And then they'd pick, they'd be like, okay, you, Jeff, you know, and Jeff would come out and it's just a regular little kid. Yeah. He'd be like, thanks, Ramblin' Rod. And they're so stoked, you know. Yeah. Next, we're going to watch, and it would, they would introduce his show. And um, and then they'd get like a pin off of his vest. He had filled with pins. And I think children, I used to get so excited. And I'd be like, Mom, I want to go on Ramblin' yeah, Rod. Yeah. <laughs> and she'd be like, uh huh. Uh huh. Never gonna happen. Yeah, not well, gonna we do Well, I know I had Captain Kangaroo. And, yes. Yeah. But I don't know who this was. It was the end of some show, and it was a similar thing where she goes, Well, let me take out my magic mirror and see who's watching today. Uh-huh. I see Patty and Susan uh-huh. and Rick oh. and Steve. And I was like, Christina, say Christina. Yeah, Christina. Oh, my fucking God. Like, right? she sees me. You want to have a common name because yeah. that's like Sean. <laughs> oh, my God. That's so funny. I love that. Sean yeah. loved that the this astronauts and NASA, they would be like, and we're this one goes out to and they'd say a few children's names who um, children are watching and one time they said the name sean and he went nuts yeah and he was like i knew it i knew you know you think it's so funny but you need that i feel like magic. as a child it's that magic that connection that like i can do it too and magic yeah. even the muppet show i loved that growing up it was simple mm-hmm. it was it was wild and you know, there were people with the puppets. I don't know. Yeah. It's, it's a different, it was a different time. It was I a guess. different time, but I think there is some importance to children seeing like me, like modeled healthy behavior. Oh, a hundred percent. And that's really the best thing parents can do. You don't have to know all the answers. You don't have to be able to do everything perfectly. You just have to show that you're trying and communicate. My two year old, every time someone walks into our house, I'm always like, Hey, how you doing? How was your day? 
And now he, Julian, oh, he does it. Goes, how was your day? Like he just, oh, cute. Because he picks, uh-huh. yeah. Because I, yeah, that makes me crazy when you walk into somebody's home and their children don't acknowledge. They're just watching TV. Or I'm like, oh, dude, yeah. be a fucking person. Yeah, Say hello. like acknowledge another human in our space. Yeah. So now he does. Yeah. How so was I your day? That. How was your day? That's so cute. I know. Too cute. I want ten more now. Uh, yeah. I'm too old. For <laughs> okay, that was a good one. That was a good one. Um, okay, we have. Let's do one more question because I sure, feel like we're running, we we talk a lot. You guys could just you know whatever. Well, you know what's anyone doing? It's the pandemic. Okay, so right. this this one we'll do because it's a mommy. It's mm. a um. Okay. Hi, Katie plus mommy. <laughs> I'm 29 years old, single parent. I adopted two children from foster care. Wow. Bless you. Uh, that's something I've considered as well. They <gasps> came to me. I mean. Do it. I don't know. But like, I've considered it. Watch the movie. My husband was in um, Instant Family. Oh, okay. Watch that movie. Okay. It'll make you cry and it'll make you want to foster. Well, and the adopt. foster care system's so messed up and there's so many lovely children. Just, it's really sad. I think so. I want to do that too. And my, cause kids I've worked in the foster care system at like this home for foster teens and it's like devastating. So I, mm. they need, they need loving care. So bless That's you for amazing. doing that. It says, uh, they came to me at six and eight and were adopted at ages 10 and 12. That's such a big deal for them. Aww. I love them with my entire body and wouldn't change any of the decisions that I've made, but I don't consider myself a quote unquote real mom. Oh, stop. I don't feel like a mom or have that biological maternal instinct. Hmm. I have a lot of mom friends that have so much anxiety about something bad happening to their kids, but I never feel anything like that. It's because you're not anxious. That's okay. Mm -hmm. I find myself thinking a lot about what my life would be like if I hadn't fostered. I feel tons of guilt about this. And I wonder if it's possible to have some sort of postpartum depression after fostering or adopting. I also wonder if I didn't feel a deep maternal connection because I didn't care for them as babies. And Mm -hmm. when, when I announced that I was having a guest, she crossed her fingers. It'd be you. Oh, that's so sweet. Yeah. I think what you're talking about, is I think the experience I don't know because I've never fostered a child I've only ever done bio bio kids Mm -hmm. the pregnancy and the birthing and all that stuff it's a thing Mm -hmm. it's a big thing it can be traumatic for people the hormones shifting does you know postpartum depression anxiety uh all that stuff right and so what you what you're talking about that overprotectiveness I believe is kind of a carryover from their infancy stages Mm -hmm. When you're like, oh, well, they're so fragile. Yeah. <laughs> I scratch them with my fingernail. Oh my God, they're going to die. Yeah. Or yeah. just like the wobbly time where they're, they can yep. fall over and fucking knock all their teeth out or yeah. crack their and heads And their heads open. aren't like fully. Yeah. <laughs> so it's really that you're not seeing them as they are in the, for instance, my four and a half year old is way more adept and mm-hmm. agile than the two year old. And she got hers at six and eight. So, so they're like little humans already. Like, yeah. You know what I mean? They have yeah. little personalities and they can speak full sentences and. Yeah, so that maternal, that quote, mater- it sounds like you're equating the maternal thing with the anxious thing. Mm-hmm. And I think maybe because you didn't go through that really, really fucked up. T- and it's actually, if I could, I would take two two-year-olds over one newborn. Oh, I hate one- the newborn phase. Well, and they call it the fourth trimester for a reason. Oh, it's horrible. They, they aren't sufficient. In, they can't help themselves at all. I know. And it's, you're so wrecked. Like yeah. you, you, you've had, you've been depleted for nine months. Mm-hmm. Like it's sucking you. It's, it's physical. And then you birth and then you can't sleep, dude. And it's, then your bits are all messed up and hurt. Everything. And you have to like spray the thing and wear the bad <laughs> underwear. And do you know what I mean? Yeah, like no one talks about no. the, the ugly, uncomfortable, terrible parts about it. And like, yeah. also, I don't know if you've experienced this, You're but broken. Yeah. And a lot of my friends felt like, first of all, the smell of their spouse repulsed them. Which <laughs> That's <laughs> funny. While they were pregnant or after? after? Yeah. And they think it was, I, I read about it. It's like biologically so that we don't try to get pregnant right away. Cause yeah. you're not supposed to have sex for six weeks. They say now, but back in the day there was no doctor. So you're, you're like, yuck. Yeah. <laughs> I need to heal. I just gave birth to a thing. Get your thing away from me kind of thing. So anyway, I just, you know, there's a lot going on. Well, and also the yuck factor can go for a long time. It's Mm -hmm. not just the first six week, whatever window. It's like, you can feel that way for a year, for two years. Some women, they lie, they're dormant. Their sexuality Mm -hmm. is crushed after they have babies. Mm -hmm. I don't blame you because they suck everything on you. Different too. It can feel very different. And some of my friends feel like if you have a newborn too, they're like all touching on you and you just want your body to be your own. Like, I don't want anybody touching (sighs) me. It's a lot. It's a lot. Especially breastfeeding because the whole culture is that you should want this. This Mm -hmm. is natural. This is 
the best. They even had the slogan, breast is best. Oh, uh-huh, forever. Yeah. And, and, <laughs> but it's not always best. It's not always for the mother. Some, mm-hmm. some women can't physically do nope. it. Some women don't produce enough milk. Mm-hmm. So there's guilt. There's Some women don't just don't want to. <laughs> yeah. And that's completely fine. There so should listen, be no judgment. The point is, the fact that you got a six and an eight-year-old means you bypassed a lot of the fucking <laughs> horribleness of having a child. And mm-hmm. that's fine. And I think you're... The quote guilt might be that you didn't pay that price. Do you yeah. know what I'm saying? Yeah, like we don't maybe... have that fear or that. Yeah, it's like you didn't, you didn't do what you quote unquote, what you think you're, you're supposed, supposed to, to do. Yeah, um, which I think is probably feeding into the I don't feel like a real mom. That's bullshit. You are a real. You mom. are a real mom. You have children that you're taking care of. You're responsible for them, and, and you're t- yeah, a hundred percent. And let me tell you, birth moms are the. Like, oh, where are they at? That's what I was gonna say. Birthing somebody doesn't make you a mom. No, it's just like. Uh, the, I always say, um, like, especially fathers, like impregnating a woman doesn't make you a father, you know? So birthing a child doesn't make you a mother. It's what you do after that. Well, and I think mothering too, you could be a dog mom, Mm -hmm. you can be a cat mom, you can be a squirrel mom, a a snake Mm -hmm. mom, whatever. You can be a foster mom. The the act of nurturance and the selflessness of nurturing another being and putting that person over you. Mm -hmm. That's the nature of mothering. Yes. And watching them develop and grow. And yeah, it's like. Yeah, it's dude. magical. So when are you going to foster? I want it. <laughs> I think you'd be I'm going to start with foster, foster dogs. Yeah. I really love dogs. I think you'd be great at, I think you'd be great. I mean, it's something that I've considered just because I don't have any urge. I mean, we're not, that we're not, not biologically that. like boo boo. Yeah. And also I feel like uh, there's just so many children out there that need homes too. And I've had friends that have done it and, um, it's been really powerful and I have friends that are considering it and, um, yeah, what a great thing to do. What a I magical would gift. To, if I know. couldn't conceive naturally, I would have done it. I yeah. would love to help someone. Yeah. Or like some gay kids that got kicked out by shitty parents. Oh God. I yeah. want like, I want like work with the Trevor project to help that. Is you that, know? is that who I would go to? I mean, I don't know. That's only, that's an organization that I know assists with stuff like that and is a support. I would love that. Like all yeah. just a house of gay kids whose yeah. parents are like be supportive, terrible. help them develop and learn about themselves and be okay with who they are. So magical. No, mommy. Okay, I think that's it. I think that's all, right. all the time we've we got. Did it. Oh, yeah, that we was did so it. much fun. That was. Thank you for coming. Thank you for having me. I'm honored to be your first guest. I know. I love your show. I love you, and um, thank you so much for having me. Yeah. And if you haven't checked out Christina, she has her own podcast, Where My Mom's At. I'll link it below. Also, her and her husband Tom have an amazing and hilarious podcast, Your Mom's House. Uh, this, when does this drop? You, this will drop on Thursday. <gasps> Perfect. Mm-hmm. Um. Well, your mom's mm-hmm. house is nothing like <laughs> what Katie does. But Sean um, and I have a podcast too that's nothing like okay. this. Okay. Mm-hmm. Well, if you like seventh grade humor and farts and stuff. And TikToks. And TikToks. <laughs> we're doing a live show. We're streaming it live. Your mom's house live. There's going to be sketches. Special guest Joey Diaz is coming <gasps> on. I <laughs> love Joey Diaz. Yeah, he's the best. Dr. Drew. We, we did all kinds of fun mm-hmm. stuff. Special guests. Um, yeah, that's a live show. You can find it on your mom's house podcast. Yeah, I'll link that stuff below. Yeah. Um, so check them out. They're hilarious. And wonderful thank and you thanks well, I for love being you. here i love you yeah i love you too thanks for coming yeah. bye guys have a good week katie anything you can ask her about your therapist or vent about your work you can ask her about your self-esteem or why you're feeling